Hello, in this problem we're going to find all relative extrema of this function using the second derivative test for multivariable functions. So the second derivative test requires uh, two steps. Step one is to basically solve this equation. You set the first partial with respect to x equal to zero and the partial with respect to y equal to zero. And let's say you solve this and you get a, b as an answer. And the next step says that you have to look at something called d. So big D is defined as fxx, fyy, minus, and then it's the mixed partials, and it's this quantity squared. And then you just have to investigate what happens at AB. So at AB, you have a couple different cases. So if big D is positive, and the second derivative with respect to x is also positive, then in this case, you have a min. It's really easy to memorize it if you think backwards positive min, positive min. Likewise, if big D is positive, and the second partial with respect to x is negative, in this case you have a max, negative max. So it's just the opposite. If big D is less than zero, we have something called the saddle point. And if big D is equal to zero, the test is inconclusive, so inconclusive. Okay, so that's everything we have to do in this problem. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, I haven't done this problem yet, so it's going to be a little bit interesting. So we'll start by taking the first partials with respect to x, so fx. So the partial with respect to x means that um, all of the other variables in the problem are considered constants. So everything here is a constant. So the y is, everything with a y is a constant. So y is a constant, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so the y hangs out and we just get y e to the x. Since y is a constant, e to the y is also a constant, so its derivative is zero, so we don't have to write it. And we set this equal to zero. But right away, we can see we do have a solution to this. e to the x can never be zero, so that means that y must be equal to zero. Let's find the partial with respect to y. In this case, we treat everything that has an x as a constant. So differentiating this first term here, we're differentiating with respect to y, e to the x is a constant, so it just hangs out. The derivative of y is 1, so we get 1 times e to the x, which is just e to the x. The derivative with respect to y of e to the y is simply e to the y. And we set this equal to 0. So we know y is 0, that's really important. So if we plug it in here, we get e to the x minus e to the 0, and that's equal to 0. But e to the 0 is 1, so this is e to the x minus 1, and that's equal to 0. Adding 1 gives us e to the x equals 1. That means that x must also be 0, right, because e to the 0 is 1. So there we have it. We have two choices. We have two values, uh, x equals 0 and y equals 0. That's going to be our a, b here. All right, I'm going to scroll down. So we have 0, 0 as our point that we're going to test with the second derivative test. Let's go ahead and compute big D. To do that, we need fxx, fyy, and fxy. Let's do fxx. I'm going to change color here. We have to be really careful here. Go. Right. So let's do fxx. That's the partial with respect to x of fx. Well, here's the first partial derivative. So again, y is a constant. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we get the same thing. And then fyy. That's the partial with respect to y. So we're looking here. In this case, the derivative of e to the x, well, that's zero, so it goes away. And the derivative of e to the y is simply e to the y, so we get negative e to the y. And the last one we need is fxy. That's the partial of fx with respect to y. If we compute that, we'll notice that the derivative of y is one, and the e to the x is a constant, so we just get e to the x. That took a lot of brain power. You really have to know how to compute partial derivatives to do this. Big D is going to be fxx, I'll go ahead and write it, fxx, fyy, minus fxy squared. Pretty cool problem. So big D is equal to, so fxx is y e to the x. Go ahead and replace that there. fyy is negative e to the y, minus fxy is e to the x, and that's squared. So big D is equal to, 
and put the negative in the front, negative y e to the x, e to the y, minus e, and then here you can just multiply the x and the two, so e to the two x. All right, good stuff. So now we need to evaluate it at zero, zero to see what happens. So big D evaluated at zero comma zero. Well, the whole thing here is gonna be zero, this piece here, because um, that's uh, zero, y is zero. So this is zero minus e to the zero. E to the zero is one, so we get negative one, which is less than zero. This means we have a saddle point. So we have a saddle point. at zero, zero. Remember when the big D is less than zero, we always have a saddle point. We don't have to worry about checking um, FXX. It's only when big D is positive that we do the little thing with the min and the max. So yeah, I hope this video has made a little bit of sense and it's helped you in some way.